G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, today I'm going to do a little project that's been on the back burner for a while. This finally arrived from China. It's another one of those very, very cheap, under three dollars uh, to buy, delivered off of eBay. Uh, it's a 360 degree ball mount uh, camera mount. It's a pivoting ball type thing that goes on the top of a tripod, that's what it's meant for, and then you put your camera on top and lets you loosen off this little thing and you can pivot it all around the place. And I've used a couple of these for uh, camera mounts, you know, with maybe magnetic bases, and I was thinking, you know, I reckon one of these would be good for a test indicator base. You know, you've got the pivoting action, and I use test indicators a lot. I mean, they're far more useful, in my opinion, for most lathe work than a dial indicator because they're small and they're compact and they can do internal work as well. And, you know, when you look at the magnetic bases you can get, you can need to get the big chunky ones, for it, which are really meant for dial indicators, but test indicators can use them. Or you get the tiny little baby ones, which I've got one of those, and that's pretty good too. Uh, they sort of multi-joint things. I'll show you what I've got in a minute anyway. And I was thinking, well, I could make up something out of one of these, which I think would be quite handy. So to do this, we're going to need two things. We're going to need one of these and one of these. So what's with the bubble jet printer? Well, it doesn't have to be a bubble jet printer. It can be a scanner. It can be any sort of printer. But when you open these things up inside, you see you, they've got the perfect part we need. And these are often thrown out on the side of the road. These are junk. This rail here, this rail that holds the print head. Here's the print head. And uh, that rail is basically, well, it's a very well-made rail. It's, it's precision ground. Uh, it's chrome-plated. And believe it or not, it is very, very close to the diameter of the mount on a test indicator. They all tend to be round about the same dimension. I mean, there's no real standard, but that is very, very close. And I've used these before to make extensions. Now here's an extension, so that's basically that. So that's where you get your, your metal from to use your you know, to use on your test indicator as the vertical mount or the cross arm or whatever you want. Old, an old bubble jet printer or a scanner. Scanners use these as the rails. I have two of these for the light beam to go backwards and forwards. So, you know, once again, there's no such thing as junk. So you've got precision ground, chrome plated rod. What, you know, it's perfect for the job. Right, well I'm not going to pull the printer apart right now because I've already done one from another older one. So here's the rod we're going to use, a little bit of rod like that. Here's our base. Now all we have to do is attach the rod to that with a threaded uh, joiner. So basically just a bit of metal with a quarter Whitworth or quarter UNC uh, right through the guts of it. And put a quarter thread on the end of this, the other end as it is, and just basically screw the two in from opposite ends of the joiner. Now once we've done that, it looks like this. Right, well there you go. Now that's pretty simple. I made that out of brass so it wouldn't rust and I knurled it. It's locked tighter together, so basically that's where you're heading for. I mean that's what you're aiming to do, and of course once you loosen this, we'll just pivot all around, that's the whole name of the game. And on the bottom we're going to have to put our magnet there. Now, this is a 28.5 diameter, mil diameter base, so you can get a 30 mil magnet or you can get a 20, a 25 mil magnet. So I went for 25 and here it is. Now these are not very expensive either. Now this is all aluminium. Now, the thing is that these have a 5mm hole in the middle of them. 
but of course a 5mm hole was too small to take a quarter Whitworth or quarter UNC bolt. It's just that little bit too small, it won't go through. So you can't drill the, or grind this stuff very successfully. These will crack very easily. If you drop them, they'll also shatter. Once they're mounted in a housing, in a recess and glued in place, they're quite robust, no problem. So the, the name of the game is you've got to get this to screw in to here. You've got to get this to go in that side of it. So I made up a, a little a little mount which will screw in which is like that. It's basically, you can see how that goes. The thread would, would normally go through the centre of this. I've actually bray, bronze brazed the thread on. But if you haven't got that capability, well, all you do is make up your, your base, drill it right through, tap it with the thread, put a recess, a tapered recess inside of it for the for the bolt head, so it's coming through like this, and then glue your magnet in after. So that's what we're going to do. And it's basically just a matter of then make up a, a mount to hold the test indicator. I mean, it's a very, very simple project, this. Okay, well, here's the two sorts of mag bases that most people are familiar with. There's the chunky sort like this, which are really meant for dial indicators, got a switchable magnet on the base. They're good, but they're chunky, big, awkward to position uh, if you're working in close particularly, you know. I don't really like these. I've got a couple of these, never use them. Then you've got this sort, which is the little baby ones for test indicators, just test indicators, and these have a multi-position arm. These are really good, these are great. You get these from China. Even the test indicator is Chinese, it works fine, just as good as any Mitchell Toya. Just for home use, it's great. Accuracy, not a problem. So, this, had, this doesn't have a switchable base, it's just a permanent magnet. So what I'm gonna do is make up something which is a, a mix of the two, you know, just use the, the pivoting ball mount base with a rod on it, so basically these don't pivot on the base, either of these, but this one will, so I'll be able to, you know, swing that whole arm one way or the other, and uh, theoretically it should be easy to get in close with it and position the, uh, the little jigger. Right, well, that's where we're heading. Right, well here's how you'd use the, the standard little mount, and I'm just aligning the face of the magnetic uh, mount for the for the new mount uh, I've got to machine out the the center bigger the magnet I had to go in there which was relatively low powered and which oh, I've decided to replace was only 20 mil so I've got to open out the the mount out to 25 or a little bit over 25 so it will take the 25 mil uh, new rare earth magnet these particular uh, bases that come with these have a, a micro adjuster too, so you can actually move the thing up or down. You could actually make up one of these to go on your homemade one. It, it's quite a simple device. It's just a, a little pivot point and a compression screw. So you can easily incorporate one of those if you wanted to. I'm not going to bother, I'm just going to keep it simple, just have a ball mount and just go with that. Okay, so that's lined up now, I'll just open it up with a boring bar. Once again, this is where carriage stop comes in handy. You just uh, slide it up and bring it in, bring in the boring bar until it hits the base. Now lock up your carriage stop, and you're good to go. No chasing any dials or rooting around. This is as simple and as foolproof as it, as it gets. Alright, we'll, uh, we'll get on with the job.
you notice that I power feed up most of the way and then the very last bit take it out of drive and you just finish by hand and that way you don't put any pressure on your carriage stop can't lose your position I mean these are a must have I'm also cutting this dry it's this high speed steel but it's machining this quite alright you don't have to use lube all the time and uh, nothing's getting hot and it's doing the job quite nicely plus I want to glue this so I don't have to clean it all up to get the oil and stuff off uh, and uh, you know let the glue adhere properly alright better take some measurements I suppose Anyway, we'll get on with it. Right, well I've opened up the, the base for the bigger magnet. The original magnet I had in this particular base was 20 mil, and I'm going to put a 25 in so I've just machined it as you saw. We're going to use plain old quick grip. Now with this stuff if you ever have a tin of this and it starts going off, you know, starts going uh, non-usable, we'll just stick some enamel paint thinners in there and mix it up and it'll rejuvenate it. A good little trick and also when you add it put it on use a cotton bud and it saves getting it all over your screwdrivers and stuff uh, we'll put a bit of this in we'll clean up afterwards when it's dried and uh, the magnet will pull itself into the in against the the base so it'll really bond well I will put some on the magnet as well on the back of the magnet but it will it will adhere pretty well now it's just a matter of get it on there without getting it on them fingers right it wasn't too bad now it's just a matter of cleaning up a bit and let the, the glue dry overnight and then uh, probably just have to face the edge back a little bit because I've made the hole slightly deeper than the magnet so I can get a nice clean finish on it. You can do it whichever way you like, you can make the magnets sound a little bit proud. I like to get it as flush as possible and that way you've got less chance of particles sticking on there, you know, around the edges. Just use some old toilet paper to get the worst of it. Whoops! The worst of it off for now. Right, we'll come back tomorrow and finish it off.
just got it on an old lid so that I can stop the paint running onto the base. Just a bit of black enamel I've got laying around. This will just stop it rusting. professional look. Well the paint's dried, it looks okay. And we can see the here's the basis of our mount. When you mount this, uh, you, there's two ways to do it. You can have it mounted like this. We we'll just use it as a small uh, rotating pivoting point for a short shaft, a short mounting shaft. Or you can set it up so that with the same mount, so it will take a, a long uh, cross arm. Depends on, once again, how you're going to use it, uh, what sort of work it's going to do. And once again, uh, this extension shaft is made out of a, a slide rail out of a, out, of a, out of a bubble jet printer. Right, I'll show you what I did. I mean, there's a number of ways to make these mounts. If you look at existing uh, test indicator stands, you can just copy what they've got, which is basically what I did. But anyway, I'll show you the one that I uh, decided to use. Well, here it is. It's pretty simple. It's just two little tabs with a, uh, a hole that goes right through. They're basically the same. Well, this one's got rounded off corners to give it some clearance. Uh, because this one will be closest to the test indicator. This one will, will go onto the vertical shaft. So by uh, putting this on the vertical shaft, you can slide it up and down on the shaft, and the other one here can pivot any old which way, and you can also rotate your test indicator in the hole. So it can go like that, or it can go like that. And then the whole thing can go up and down and turn around this way and that way. So this is a pretty simple but good uh, mounting system. Easy to make. All you need is a bit of flat steel. I made these out of a bit of flat stuff like that. And there's just a couple of things you need to know. But uh, you can see it's simple and it's just got a, a screw head I made up as a bolt goes through this tab completely through this one side of this tab and then it threads into this side and it's loctited in so you can then compress them or uncompress them as you want. You'll notice also that there's a spring in here as well so that it's not sort of going to be fully on or fully off the spring gives you some variable tension so you can just back it off enough that it slides up and down without it falling all over the place so yeah I just recessed into the actual knob a bit hope that comes up and uh, put a washer on there simple 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 setup so that's what I went with now when you make these tabs there's one thing to be aware of you've got to slit the metal and that can be a problem if you do it the wrong way around. When you do this, start off with a bit of metal and look at it making it in this in this way that basically you're going to take it out of the metal in that position. So what you do is you decide where you're going to drill your hole, you drill your hole down through it, then you can mount this in your tool post and use a slitting saw or a grinding disc, a little friction disc in the chuck or the collet to slit in through. You just drive the, you just drive your piece of steel into it, the same as it's mounted the same way as you would for any tool that you put in the tool holder. So that's how you do your slit, very simple. Then after you've done that, you can then cut it off and then just grind the the angles on the end and the thickness to give it the, the springiness. 
Now, uh, I didn't do that. I actually did it another way, and I got into strife. I had to finish up mounting it with a bolt through through uh, the centre of this. It was pretty cactus. So that's the way to do it, guys. Just, uh, yep, drill your hole first, slit it, put it mounted in the, in the tool post, and then cut it off after and finish it off, drill your holes and whatever. Right, that's the only trick to the whole thing. We'll put it together. Well, there you have it. Now, that's how I basically intend to use it. And that will do just about everything I want to do as far as these go. I can pivot it up and down. That's why you put a bit of a radius on this one here. Pivot it up and down and you can tip it if you want to. And you can slide this up and down. And you can come in to do internal or you can uh, slide it down, do external. I don't intend to use a cross arm like this very often. Uh, I mean, you can easily fit one with this setup. So you can either line the stuff up you can line it up dead in line like this, or you can move it across Oops, move it across on an angle, and then loosen your head and pivot it that way. So the whole thing is quite flexible in the way you can use it. It, uh, it gives you a good range of, uh, of uh, variables. And for a simple, simple little mount, this is about as simple as it gets. So really that's it. Uh, I can't really show you much more about it. I'll come in close on the the top here and you can just see how that all looks. Pretty effective. Here we are doing an external reading. We can just position it, just push it down until it takes comes into contact. Now we're alright. I'll show it from the other side. So we just push it on. How yeah, simple is that? You can turn your uh, reference disc if you want to. Yeah, it's pretty simple. And I mean, you know, you've got lots of movement. And of course, the main advantages with the test indicator are that you can use it for internal work. Well, we just bring it in. Pretty cool, eh? And it costs what three dollars plus a magnet, four dollars, and a bit of time. So you know, pretty handy, pretty compact, pretty easy to mount. I can see this being used more than uh, my little baby one, even. So yeah, well, I think we'll wrap up now. And here it is with the cross arm mounted. And you can see, you've got lots of. Lots of control. So, you know, pretty damn handy little gadget. But, uh, as I said, yeah, piece of cake to make this. Well, that's it. We've come to the end of the video. Little project turned out pretty good I think and certainly those little ball joint mounts for you know such a small amount of money are super super handy you can make up all sorts of stuff with them but in this application it worked out very well and I can see myself using that mount a lot all right well that's it from me I hope you all got something out of it and I'll see you next time cheers <laughs>